10 matches that had the biggest build but completely flopped. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website WrestleMania.com. Number 10, The Undertaker vs Kane, Hell in a Cell 2010 In 2010, WWE decided to revisit The Undertaker and Kane rivalry one final time. The feud incorporated prior lore of their iconic feud and WWE even decided to bring back Paul Bearer. When they booked the two to face off inside the Hell in a Cell, fans were actually excited as this marked the first time that the two legends would face off in a notable match type. Unfortunately, whilst the build to the match was incredibly entertaining, the match was a complete dud. It was apparent that both men were way past their prime and it was a basic traditional TV match that just so happened to be inside the Hell in a Cell structure. Dave Meltzer from the Wrestling Observer would rate the match just half a star, which was the lowest rated pay-per-view main event of 2010 for WWE. Number 9, AJ Styles vs Edge, WrestleMania 38 At last, WWE were going to deliver AJ Styles vs Edge in 2022, and they were going to do it on the grandest stage of them all. Heading into the match, there was an expectation that the match would be an all-time classic. Both men were tremendous in-ring talents and Edge had recently turned heel and he had typically delivered his best work when portraying a bad guy. The match itself was a complete letdown and fans were utterly speechless with how lackluster the match really was. The two just never seemed to click in the match and their chemistry was kind of off. Subsequent matches between the two former world champions weren't much better and it could be argued that their matches, particularly at the one at WrestleMania 38, was amongst the biggest disappointments in recent memory. Number 8 Goldberg vs Brock Lesnar WrestleMania 20 The standout feud heading into WrestleMania 20 was between Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. The feud was intense, compelling and the involvement of Stone Cold Steve Austin only added to the excitement for the match. Despite fans expecting an epic war inside MSG, it was late before the show that both men were leaving the company after WrestleMania. This meant that the loyal WWE fans wanted no part of the match and they decided to heavily boo both men. This threw the two men off as they both stalled for an endless amount of time as the fans as well as the guest referee Stone Cold Steve Austin became increasingly frustrated. Goldberg ended up getting the win in a lifeless match that didn't feature a single memorable spot. The post-match angle saw Austin lay out both men with stunners which of course received one of the largest pops of the entire pay-per-view event. Number 7 Chris Jericho vs Kevin Owens WrestleMania 33 a to state that Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens carried Raw in late 2016 would be an understatement. Their pairing was unbelievable as every single segment between the two hit a home run and there was a vocal push from the audience to see the two collide in the main event spot of WrestleMania 33. An eventual breakup of the duo was teased for months and when Owens finally turned on Jericho in the acclaimed festival of friendship, fans were convinced that this was going to lead to a spectacular match at WrestleMania 33 with Jericho getting his revenge. Ultimately, WWE would decide that the match would go on second and whilst initial plans called for the match to be for the Universal title, this was later changed and Owens would drop the title to Goldberg, meaning that the match would now be for Jericho's US title. The second match on the show is typically a tough spot to be in and Jericho and Owens found it difficult to get the crowd going. The two had a standard match that was by no means awful, yet it just fell flat with the crowd. The match itself was loathed by Vince McMahon and McMahon hated the match so much that he refused to speak to Owens following the encounter. Jericho has since reflected on the WrestleMania matchup and the inaugural Undisputed Champion offered an honest insight on an episode of the Talk is Jericho podcast. Now if you know anything about placement on a wrestling show, if you're not last you want to be first. If you're not first or last you want to be semi-main event. And other than that, it's pretty much a quagmire. Unless you can get a good spot like Sean and I did which was fifth, but we had 25 minutes which went 29 minutes as I told you. This did not have that. It was scheduled for, you know, 15 minutes. And don't forget guys, it takes a minute and a half to walk to the ring. And it was just kind of just a match that was just there. And it really bo bothered me because that story was one of the best, if not the best story of that whole WrestleMania season. I still think the Festival of Friendship is one of the best segments in Raw history. Number 6, Daniel Bryan vs The Miz at SummerSlam 2018 When Daniel Bryan was cleared to wrestle in 2018, one of the matches that fans wanted to see was Bryan vs The Miz. A showdown between the two had been building for around two years and it escalated when The Miz cut an incredible shoot promo on Bryan during an episode of Talking Smack. The match would finally go down at the 2018 SummerSlam event and fans expected the match to be one of the strongest matches on the card, yet it was a match that was relatively basic in nature and for whatever reason, the crowd didn't seem too invested in the in-ring action. 
The Miz would manage to get the win via underhand tactics, and this would allow the feud to continue for the next few months. The quality of the SummerSlam match seemed to lessen the excitement from fans for the feud as their subsequent matches suffered from a lack of buzz, and before fans knew it, WWE were going in a completely different direction with both of their respective characters. Number 5. Dean Ambrose vs Seth Rollins TLC 2018 The feud between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins that took place between 2014-15 was outstanding. The two had amazing matches and their feud was a great showcase for both men. In 2018, the two would feud once again, but this time the roles would be reversed. Ambrose would now be the heel, whilst Rollins would be the babyface. The feud began when Ambrose turned on Rollins and the two were to settle their issues at the TLC pay-per-view in a match for the Intercontinental title. Due to how heated the feud was and due to how acclaimed their prior matches were, fans were anticipating a match of the year contender, yet the match they got wasn't even the match of the night. The main issue with the match was that this was supposed to be a blood feud, yet for whatever reason the match started with a lockup. The action wasn't representative of the story that WWE had told and this led to the crowd turning against the match. The crowd would heckle the two wrestlers with chants of this is boring and it was hard to disagree as this was truly one of the most uninspiring matches of the calendar year. Number 4 AJ Styles vs Shinsuke Nakamura WrestleMania 34 the idea of AJ Styles vs Shinsuke Nakamura colliding in the WWE ring at one time seemed like an impossibility. However, in 2018, WWE committed to booking the match. Nakamura would win the Royal Rumble and would challenge AJ who was a champion at WrestleMania 34. The anticipation surrounding this match, particularly those from fans on social media, was insane. Fans expected greatness and they truly believed they were going to witness one of the greatest matches in WWE history. Ultimately, the match was passable, yet it wasn't a classic matchup by any means. According to AJ during an appearance on After the Bell, fans had set their expectations way too high when it came to the match. Expectations are way too high. I know that Nakamura thought so too because no matter what we had done in the match, the expectations were too high. Here's what a lot of people don't understand. Crowd, fans, the WWE Universe, New Japan and all that stuff. The fans are everything. They're everything. They set the tone on what is a great match. It's how they respond to it, and in Japan, they're so respectful. When they do respond, it's huge. Wow, this is such an amazing match. But had the same match been done in the WWE ring without the same response, it's not going to be declared as that great of a match. The fans are everything. They dictate a great match. It's just the reality and truth of the whole thing, and a lot of people don't understand. The expectations were so high because of what we did at Wrestle Kingdom. Number 3. Roman Reigns vs Jey Uso, SummerSlam 2023 the 2023 SummerSlam main event saw a new match type debut in WWE. Roman Reigns and Jey Uso would collide in tribal combat and WWE would explain that a tribal combat match would see no DQ and no outside interference. When this was announced, it was added to the excitement for Reigns vs Jey because fans had become accustomed to Reigns' matches ending with outside interference, yet with this new stipulation, WWE would deliver something new and unique. However, when Solo Sokoa randomly interfered in the match, fans were stunned. WWE had decided to outright ignore their own stipulation, likely because they couldn't come up with a different way to book the matchup. The interference from Sokoa as well as Jim Uso later in the match ruined what could have been a match of the year contender, and it's hardly a surprise that fans label the match as one of the biggest blunders of the Triple H era to date. Number 2. Triple H vs Randy Orton WrestleMania 25 WWE's ability to tell compelling, gripping stories was on full display in early 2009. Triple H and Randy Orton had been in a feud that WWE had done an endless number of times, yet thanks to a strong storyline which saw Orton target the McMahon family, the game versus the Viper at WrestleMania 25 for the title was one of the most anticipated matches on the show. Due to the personal nature of the feud, fans wanted a match that pushed boundaries and fans wanted to see the two legends rip each other apart on the grandest stage. However, in a questionable move, WWE added the stipulation that if the game was counted out or DQ'd, then he would lose the WWE title. Due to this restricted stipulation, the two would have a standard matchup that could have been easily found on any other pay-per-view event. Fans were deflated following the match and the quality of the match pretty much ended any hype that was left for the feud. And number 1. Hollywood Hulk Hogan vs Sting Starcade 97 a Starcade 1997 was to see WCW's biggest match ever, as Sting would challenge Hollywood Hulk Hogan for the WCW World Title. This was a match that had been built up for over a year and the excitement for the match was shown with a buy rate, as Starcade 97 attracted a buy rate of 700,000, making it the most successful WCW pay-per-view of all time. Unfortunately, the match was one of the biggest disappointments in pro wrestling history. 
The match was a slow, plodding affair, and the finish should have been Sting prevailing over WCW's biggest heel, yet they made such a complex mess of one of the easiest booking decisions in their infamous history. During the match, Hogan executed a trademark leg drop on Sting and pinned Sting 1-2-3. Bret Hart then claimed that the referee performed a fast count which baffled the fans, as a count was a standard count that would have been seen in any typical WCW match. The match was restarted and then Sting won the match via a Scorpion Deathlock to win the WCW title. It took Bischoff over 25 years to finally admit that Hogan was responsible for the bizarre booking of the match, and this is what Bischoff had to say during an interview on WWE Legends. Despite the fact that Hogan did have creative control and never exercised it, he never threatened to use it. He had never implied that he might. It was like, yeah, it's there, but it's not, except for that night. And because Hulk wasn't feeling it, he called an audible and it was a mad scramble. But there you have it, folks. 10 wrestling matches that had the biggest build, but flopped completely. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.